and welcome to Yachting Monthly's How To Series, brought to you in association with GJW Direct. I'm Matthew Sheehan, and over the course of 13 episodes, we're going to be dealing with some of the key issues when it comes to maintenance and talking to some of the experts to get their tips. One of the key checks once you've started your engine is to make sure that your raw water cooling system is working properly and we see that by water coming out of the side. Now on your yacht this rubber hose will have gone through various loops before it comes out the side of the hull. So this is what you should be seeing coming out of the side of your boat once you start your engine. You need to see a good flow of water. If you don't see water coming out of your engine, then you need to locate your raw water pump. You can usually follow the ingress of this straight from your sea strainer, and they all look fairly similar. Some of them are belt driven, such as this model. Some of them are gear driven straight into the engine. The basic principle remains exactly the same. You're gonna to have to take off your cover plate here and check the state of the impeller. So as we take these off, do be careful not to drop them in the bilge. I would usually recommend in your boat putting a, a tea towel or similar below it so that if you do inevitably drop one of these, it's caught in the tea towel rather than dropping down into a, a hole you can no longer access. In here, we can see the rubber impeller. And what you'll be looking for are, are any of these blades missing or damaged. Usually, if the boat's been run dry or some debris has got into the system, you'll quite clearly see that some of these blades have been damaged. This one actually looks good, but we'll quickly show you how to pull it out and, and replace it with a new one. Now, best practice is that you use something called an impeller puller, which comes behind the impeller and levers it out of the housing. It is quite easy to damage the brass housing here and the rubber impeller itself. The reality is it's quite unlikely you'll have one of these impellers, so we're gonna use two pairs of pliers very gently levering it out. It's not best practice, but it's what most people are likely to have to do. Right. So we're pulling it out here, being very careful with the rubber fins and the housing. It comes out nicely and we can now have a really good inspection of it. This one looks in really good condition. It's a new impeller and we're very happy with that. Another problem you might face is the wear plate inside. This cam here is what forces the blades to bend as it goes around, producing the lift effect on the pump and forcing the water through the system. So it is possible to get some damage or some corrosion to the lift plate here, and that is something that you might also need to replace, which is usually just held in place by a grub screw from the other side of it. Have a good inspection of the housing, check there's no damage, check the rubber o-ring around here, and once you replace it with a new impeller, you should be pretty happy that the system will start working again. So if you're missing parts of your impeller, it is imperative before you run the engine again that you find those missing parts. It's a simple matter of tracing from your lift, from your raw water pump, take off the hose, look for it in the hose, find your way through to the heat exchanger, open the ends of the heat exchanger where you'll see copper tubing, and find those bits of impeller. If you do find it in the heat exchanger, there's some very fragile copper tubing in there. So just be very careful with a piece of electrical wire or similar to poke it through. 
but make sure the heat exchange is clear, your hoses are clear, and there's no rubber left in the system. When you do come to mount your new impeller, it'll usually come with a little pack of grease or lubricant. Just put that around the fins, and then you can put that into your raw water pump housing. Make sure that your impeller is facing the right way around. There is a front and a back to the impeller. And make sure that you bend the fins in, in the direction that the engine will turn when it goes back in. So there you can see the impellers in and the fins are being bent by the cam plate which produces the lift effect for the pump. Put the face plate back on. You'll find there might either be a rubber o-ring or there may be a paper gasket that sits between the face plate and the body of the pump. And you just need to make sure that's in place and in good condition. It is, if the existing gasket's in good condition, there should be no reason why you can't reuse it if you don't have a spare one to put in place. If you don't have the correct gasket, there are lots of marine sealants suitable to, for, for water, for coolant, that you could just rub around the inside of the faceplate there, and that will certainly give you a good seal until you can get home and, uh, and get the proper gasket in place. Do just be careful as you tighten up the screws, both when removing it and putting it back on, that you're using the right tool. It's important not to round these, these off. Good practice, however, is that you replace your impeller before it fails. For our skippers, we don't really believe in having failed impellers. If there's good checks to the raw water supply before you fire it up, your sea strainer is clean, there should be no reason for your impeller to fail. So have a look on the packaging or the manual, see what the service hours are for the impeller, and make sure you're changing it before it fails. Well, thanks for watching, I hope that was of help. Make sure that you like us, make sure that you subscribe to us and stay in touch for the next episode.